All right, now that we've gone through human sight, how do we know that plants see? And actually, I think most of you have seen plants responding to light. Like, let's take a look at this movie right here. What we have is a movie of bean seedlings that every 12 hours, the light is being changed from one side to the other. And as it's clear, you could see that the seedlings are starting to actually bend and follow where the sun is. Here now they've gone back the other one way, and in a second they'll go back the other way. So we really see the plants seeing the light and responding by growing and bending towards the light. Now, you might be surprised to learn that one of the first people to study how plants respond to light and how they bend was Charles Darwin. While you're all familiar with Darwin's work on evolution, what you're probably less familiar with is that the last 20, 30 years of his life, most of Darwin's research had to do with plant biology. And one of his most important works was published in 1880 together with his son, Francis Darwin. It's called The Power of Movement in Plants. And what Darwin noticed and here he was studying many types of plants, but to take, for example, he was studying a, a certain type of grass called canary grass, that if you put the canary grass in a room with only a very dim candle on one side of the room, and I think Darwin wrote about it saying that it was so dim that he couldn't even see the clock on the wall, the plant, in this case the grass, bent towards the candle. Now Darwin did this experiment on tens of types of plants, and he came to the following conclusion, and this is in his own words. Heliotropism, that's what we call the bending towards the light, prevails so extensively among higher plants that there are extremely few of which some part, either the stem, flower punticle, pedial, or leaf, does not bend towards a lateral light. Or in more modern English, what Darwin is saying here, that almost every type of plant is sensitive to light and will bend towards the light. But Darwin was not only the observer of nature, he was also an excellent experimentalist. And Darwin asked the following question, where is the eye of the plant? Which part of the plant is sensing the light in order to allow it to bend towards it? Now Darwin's hypothesis was that the part of the plant that senses the light, what we would call the eye, of course we're not talking about human eyes here, is at the tip of the plant. So what experiments could he do in order to test his hypothesis. Here's his observation, that when he puts lateral light from the side, the plant, in this case the seedling, bends towards it. His hypothesis was it's the tip of the plant. So the first thing he did was he chopped off the tip. And as you can see here, the plant lost the ability to bend towards the light. So what's the conclusion from such an experiment? Now your conclusion might be that the plant that that obviously proves that the tip of the plant is what sees the light. But I got news for you. If I cut off your heads, you also lose the ability to see. So we need a, a little, a few more experimental controls. So his first control that he did was he now covered the top of the plant with a hat, with a cap that was impermeable to light. And in this case, the plant also didn't bend. So does this prove or support uh, Darwin's hypothesis that the tip of the plant is what's seeing the light? Well, it could be that, the tip of the, that it does support it, but it could also be that this cap was so heavy that it inhibits the plant from responding. So he did another control. And this time, he covered the tip of the plant with a glass cap, which allowed light signals to go through. And under this conditions, lo and behold, the plant does bend. So we can see here in a very simple experiment with no huge technology that was published in 1880 Darwin successfully showed that it's the tip of the plant that senses the light signal, and somehow or another, it transfers this light energy, or this light signal, down to the bottom part of the plant, and that's where the bending occurs. So Darwin concluded that a signal moves from the tip to the base. In his own words, we must therefore conclude that when seedlings are freely exposed to lateral light, some influence 
is transmitted from the upper to the lower part, causing the latter to bend. Again, that's very verbose. What's he saying? That we must conclude that there is some way that the tip is sensing the light, is transducing a signal to the lower part, which is causing it to bend. So this isn't quite so different than what happens for us. When I caught the baseball, my eye sensed the light and sent the signal to my hand. In phototropism, the ability of the plant to bend to the light, the tip is sensing the signal and transferring that signal down the length of the plant to the part that's bending. So Darwin showed in his experiment that plants sense light and respond by bending to it. And this is a picture actually taken from his book in his own uh, drawing, uh, The Power of Movement in Plants. But now I want to go back to what I talked about in the beginning of today's lecture, that plants can differentiate between colors. And here's an experiment that was carried out by one of Darwin's colleagues, Jules von Sachs in Germany, in the late 19th century. And Sachs asked the question, can plants differentiate between different colors? And what he showed is that the same seedlings that Darwin studied will bend to blue light, but not to red light. In other words, plants, like humans, differentiate between different colors of light. Now, some of you may know people who are colorblind, and we know how that affects their life. So I want you to imagine for a second what would be the behavior or the response of a plant that was colorblind. 